So this is the second video where we're talking about getting a Linux shell on a Windows machine. Now I do know that Windows has a Linux subsystem and even runs a Linux kernel supposedly when you're working with that subsystem. I don't know about any of that. I'm talking about just being able to get a useful shell and your core tools available quickly uh, and simply on a Windows machine, whether it's Windows 10 or going back, uh, probably all the way back to XP, I would assume this would work. Uh, in the previous video, we looked at using BusyBox, which really truly wasn't Bash. Now we're looking at something else that actually probably it truly is a Bash shell, uh, but it has all your core tools as separate executables as well. So you don't even have to go into the shell to, ex to call those executables. Um, but the drawback is it's not one file and it's much larger than the BusyBox option. Uh, so in most cases I go with the BusyBox option, but here's another option for you to check out. So again, as I mentioned in the last video, I recorded this on a Windows machine and I was unable to preview the videos I was recording. And so the frame rate was uh, kind of horrible and I recorded the audio separate on my phone. So take this video for what it is. It was the best I could do with the situation I have. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you find it useful. Okay, we're looking at a, another way to install Bash on a Windows system. And again, I'm aware that there's the whole uh, Linux subsystem for Windows, which I'm assuming is more than just a Bash executable. Um, but I haven't played with that at all. In the previous video, we looked at using BusyBox, but let's go ahead and look at this. If you Google Bash for Windows, uh, somewhere in the list, you'll probably find this WinBash Bash ports for Windows, and it's on SourceForge. So go ahead and click on that, and we will scroll down and click on the download the latest. And I have pretty much no experience with this. I just downloaded it to test it, and it does seem to work. Uh, I do prefer, again, the BusyBox uh, example. So this is uh, in a zip file, just over five megabytes, where the BusyBox was um, about a half a megabyte. So this is about 10 times the size. But it does seem to have a few more tools, but you notice it's not a single executable file. Um, and if you look in through here, there's libraries. So this looks like it's using SigWin, which I think is how you say that. Uh, so, which is like a Linux or a Unix type environment for Windows. And this just seems like it's taking certain files from it and giving it to you in one little zip file. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to uh, copy all these. I'll go to my downloads directory and I will create a new folder. I'll call it bash and I'll go in there. So again, there's a bash executable in here. And it looks like after this is extracted, it's 13 megabytes. So now it's, you know, almost 30 times the size of the BusyBox. But again, there seems like there's more tools in here. Um, there's even a C compiler in here, it looks like. Uh, once that is done extracting, I will go ahead and run CMD. I will move into my downloads directory and then move into my bash directory here. And now I should be able to type in, well, I should theoretically, I think, be able to type in these commands. So yeah, I can run these executables. So if you were to extract uh, these files to your Win System 32 folder, I would think they'd be uh, usable already uh, in your Windows programming scripts, but we should be able to type in bash here and actually get a bash shell. And it, with the BusyBox, like I said, it had a bash shell, but I'm not sure if that truly was bash or if it was another shell, the, the A shell or Ash shell, however you say it, uh, which is very similar, but may not be completely compatible, where this might be a f actual bash shell. Uh, but once you're in here, you should be able to have all your, your commands that you can run uh, that you would normally be able to run. You know, you should probably have grep in here, uh, we'll have awk, and these might be fuller versions of the program. I'm pretty sure when I typed in awk in BusyBox, uh, it gave me a lot less options in the help output uh, than, than this is. So this is another option. Again, the BusyBox option is nice. It's a single binary and has most of those core tools, uh, and it's very small. Where this is multiple files you can extract. Um, there's no linking with BusyBox. If I wanted to access wget uh, from like a batch file, a Windows batch file, I would have to uh, call it through BusyBox or here or link it. Uh, where here it's just a wget executable. So all these tools, again, are available uh, if I was to put them in my system path anywhere I want. So you got your gzip and, and grep and a bunch of other things in here. Uh, so more than just those core tools that I normally would use. Uh, but this is another option for installing a shell of some sort. And in this case, it's probably an actual bash shell. Um, if I did echo dollar sign zero, it just tells me bash, okay. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you another option. Vi is in here. Oh, but Vi didn't seem to work through this. It's having 
uh, problems with my terminal type. Uh, probably, yeah, probably a way to get that working. But Vi did work through BusyBox, so if you need that, which is still, uh, again, probably a stripped-down version of Vi, not the full version. Uh, but yeah, looking through here, there's, yeah, 119 items in here, an empty folder, and some libraries. But most of these are probably about 100 different commands that you're probably used to on your Linux system, now available on your Windows system. And all you have to do is put them in that Windows System 32 folder, or in any folder that you have linked to a, as a path, in your path variable, uh, and you should be able to access them. So you should be able to count to 100 here. If I, is the shuffle command in here? It's not. Uh, and I think the shuffle command is in the busy box. Let me exit out of here, go back, and I'll go, I don't actually have to go out here because I did put busy box in my system directory, so I should just be able to do this. And now if I do this, count to 100, I can pipe that to shuffle. Yeah, so the shuffle command's in the BusyBox one, which is a very useful tool. Although I'm sure there's something, you could probably use awk or grep to shuffle a file, I'm pretty sure. Um, or the output of a command. Anyway, that's just a quick look at another way to get a shell, uh, bash shell, or some sort of Unix-type shell on a Windows machine with a lot of core tools. So I do thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.